Hey, welcome into the social spreader on a hump day. Hope you've had a good week so far. This is to easily the most loaded social spreader episode yet. Um, two segments we're going to do today. Technically three if you count the experiment, which I cannot wait to get to. Um, but before we do any of that, I have to admit something. I was, uh, and I'm still not currently. I was not proud of what was coming out of me the last two days. Um, probably because I was equally not proud of what I put in myself on Sunday. Um, once again, more and more further is my argument that it should be Super Bowl Saturday. Super Bowl Saturday. Saturday. I have never eaten so many nachos in my life. It was almost like um, I had just discovered this new food that was so delicious with every single chip. You could get a little bit of everything. And um, big fan of Ortega. Anyone else out there? Big fan of Ortega. Maybe the greatest condiment of all time. It's up there. High on the list. Um, but I'm, I'm, I'm still unsure of why I ate as many as I did in the first place. To give you a little bit of an idea... Um, my wife makes them amazing. She makes them with chicken. She makes them with ground turkey that we do like taco meat with. And once the, and she puts them on sheet pans. And once the pans were out, about a half hour after they were out, you just put them in there for like, you know, at 350 for like a couple minutes to make sure that everything melts and everything kind of comes together. So 30 minutes they were out. I went back and ate half a sheet pan of predominantly cold nachos. And again, um, let's just say that I'm still trying to process what I did to myself on Sunday. Um, and I'm sure the joint of Maui Wowie had absolutely nothing to do with it. <laughs> but I want to talk about something uh, real quick as I am finally feeling a little bit more like myself. Um, I want to talk about what Cincinnati just did in their run during the playoffs. Um, to my knowledge, and obviously um, this is a story that has very close to my heartstrings thing um, happening with it. Um, what Cincy just did with their run in the in in the playoffs, the only thing that it reminded me of was the 2007 to 2008 Arizona Cardinals. Um, the team that literally kept me out of poverty, um, not, not hyperbole, not over dramatic, um, what was happening in the economy, especially in the job that I was in working in the stock market, um, in early 08 and just continuing through that whole year was was absolutely awful because a lot of awful people did a lot of awful things and last time I checked none of them are in jail um but that team when I say sure I, I could have moved back in with my parents but in terms of, of of income and what I was losing because of the 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 situation that I was in the leverage that I was on when it came to my stocks whole other story for a whole other day um but when you lose everything, literally, this, this was the reason that I kept myself out of poverty. Um, with the little I had, I had a feeling about this team. I don't know why. I don't know how. Um, but to say that, that, that they kept me out of, out of poverty, they, they literally paid for about four, three to four months of rent and relatively simple meals Every day. That's how much I made on, on this team. And the reason why this was so cool to watch is because it was almost the opposite. If you took Cincy to cover, I'm sorry, if you took Arizona to cover, money line in the over, and you parlayed that in some way, shape, or form, you were 3-0 and going into the Super Bowl. Um, the only thing that you would have lost the Super Bowl was the money line. And so just a quick recap of how amazing and fun this was. Much like the Cardinals, since he was 4 and 0 against the spread in the playoffs. They were 3 and 1 to the under and 3 and 1 straight up. 
The 2008 Arizona Cardinals were also 4-0 against the spread, 3-1 straight up, but they were 4-0 to the over. Maybe that's another reason why, because of a time of just dark, dwelling, losing everything in the crash of all crashes when it came to the stock market, I was being able to make ends, not only ends meet, but, but make money on a team that was covering the over. The greatest parlay that any of us, because that's what we want to see. And so I just, I really hope that, uh, that some of you out there jumped on this train. Um, I ended up 16 and 11 in the playoffs. Not bad. Um, but what they did is truly rare. I don't recall another team like that making it all the way to the Super Bowl. I want to check the Ravens, the year they won it with Flacco. They may have been an underdog in every game um, and covered and, and won. I don't know. I'd be interested, actually, to, uh, to see that. But um, it's just it's really rare to see something like that, and I truly hope that every single one of you listening, you know, the millions of you, I truly hope that you profited from the Orange Cats of Ohio. Let's do one of my growingly favorite segments back in the day. This is when I simply look at, you know, the day. I did write this yesterday, so but it's going to be very relevant now. Um, February 15th, 1933, Franklin Roosevelt escaped assassination by Giuseppe Joe Zangara in Miami, Florida. Five other people were shot. Chicago Mayor, I hope I'm saying this right, Anton Cermak did not survive, and FDR walked away unhurt. Um, This was at a very, this was at an impromptu speech, I believe at a park um, in Miami, and because Giuseppe was so short, he wasn't able to get a very good view of shooting him. Um, And so that's how so many other people were shot. I do believe that someone intervened, someone tackled him during, during or after the first couple of shots. But as I said, um, Roosevelt did not get touched. He didn't get hurt. But Chicago Mayor Anton Cermak did not survive the wound that he had. I believe he was shot in the stomach. Zang- Zangara was taken to the to the <laughs> only in Dade 305 to the Dade County Courthouse Jail and was quoted as saying, "I kill kings and presidents first, then all capitalists." Hmm. Um. There are many reports out there about what he was trying to do and what he was trying to prove and 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 all that stuff. I just um. I, I, I found that very fascinating because one, I didn't um, I didn't really recall that in the Rolodex of history that I have that uh, yeah, someone tried to shoot FDR and shot five other people and killed a Chicago um, a, uh, a Chicago mayor. Um, Giuseppe was actually given the chair 10 days later, which I still believe stands as the fastest execution um, in US history. So that's a fun historical fact of uh, what has happened back in the day in um, 1933. I will now smoothly um, transition into my other segment, Weekly Reflection. So a lot of feedback on this segment, both good and bad. But all I'm trying to do is make some form of satire from the actual headlines that are in our news. Depending upon where you look um, and how hard you look and how local you look, there are headlines of actual stories that are actually happening right now. And I just, when when I look at these things that are in our news, like that's, that's really it. I'm 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 not trying to do anything else. Like that's it. I'm reading a a headline. I mean, if if anything, I'm being some form of a reporter who might just be looking through certain stories through a certain prism, but I'm still just reporting headlines. Um I'm a big believer in the air quotes where there's smoke, there's fire approach to stories. Um 
And regardless of anything, all of these headlines simply make me shake my head and just say, what the hell? Like, what? What? And, and, you know, I know often I say more about, you know, I try to give context, I try to give nuance or my own context and my own nuance, but I, I, I often try to say more, but you get the gist of it. And yes, I cynically send people to hell. People, I highly encourage you to research to find out why I sent them to hell in the first place. And who knows? Who knows? In a time when absolutely nobody can agree on a damn thing. You might agree with me on why I sent them to hell. Who knows? But either way, let's do it. Weekly Reflections brought to you by Nobody, as I'm still hoping for that sponsor. Come on, millions of listeners. Help me out. The U.S. has suspended imports of avocados from Mexico due to a threatening call to a U.S. official. According to reports, the officer who was working in the U.S. Department of Agriculture received a life-threatening call to his cell phone while down in Mexico. It was in regard to, apparently, avocados and the handling of them or the import-export of them. Um, the actual motivation behind the, the call is still very much in question but um that is actually that actually might cause um because obviously it has suspended the imports um a a guacamole shortage that could be forthcoming um 15 year old russian figure skater camilia i'm sorry camila valieva hope i said that correctly was allowed to compete in the final rounds of the olympics where a genocide is definitely not happening. Um, <laughs> um, after failing a drug test, this news coming after Shikari Richardson was banned from the Olympics for smoking weed after a family member had passed away. In a time of grief, and Shikari Richardson is incredibly talented, um, at a time of grief to try to make herself feel a little bit less depressed, she took a stimulant of marijuana and she got banned from the Olympics. But a Russian figure skater who, simp who failed a drug test gets to, s gets to compete. Hmm. Now to Texas we go. We seem, to, we seem to always go. Attorney General Ken Paxton, of course, that's his name, has officially sued the... <laughs> The Biden administration for raising the minimum wage on federal contractors. Um, with everything going on in Texas, the attorney general is suing the president for giving people more money that the government can create. <sighs> um, to Arizona we go. Jim Lamon lame in um he's an arizona republican candidate he released an advertisement sh uh, showing him firing guns at people depicted as joe biden nancy pelosi and current arizona senator mark kelly um, mark kelly's wife was a D democrat congresswoman in arizona who was killed at point blank in 2011 and this guy is running an ad showing himself shooting at them remind you this is the same arizona where Re republican representative paul gassar was censured by the house after he created an animated video showing him killing aoc and attacking biden <laughs> what is meanwhile in boston um from according to reports a group of kkk members overtook an overpass and hung a sign that read, white patience has limits. I don't even know what that means. I don't even know why they decided to do that. I don't know so much. But the fact that that's a headline. <laughs> Speaking of Boston, Bill Belichick was with Urban Meyer at a party down in Florida at Mar-a-Lago. 
And we all know what the hell that means or what the hell that infers, regardless of anything else. And speaking of hell, the other person they were at the party with, Kelsey Grammer. So those were weekly reflections. <laughs> and um, again, another seamless transition here. So the experiment is working. Eight and four against the spread last night alone. Up 11 units over the last two weeks. And that's including a catastrophic Saturday where we got clobbered. We got absolutely hammered. Nothing went our way. In fact, I did a quick analysis of that day, just kind of going through the games and, and being brutally honest. Um, if we simply broke even that day, we'd be up 25 units over the last two weeks. We're at 58%. Um, anything around 60 is really good. You're, you're, you're going to be profitable. Um, and what's nice, though, is... 90% of the teams that I identified as fades have continued to fade. And 90% of the teams I identified as leans have been great teams to lean on. And so, sure, you know, I mean, some, some teams have went in and out of the list, but up 11 units. I mean, look, if you can do better than that, bravo. Like, I'm, I'm super, super, super happy for you. Um... But if you, you know, but if you're thinking that, that this is just a fluke and that your way or whatever system that you have can work and, you know, you, you might be at 48%, you might be, at, you know, at 50, but you might not be up 11, like, look, like you don't, you don't have to take everything as the gospel, but it's working. And this is a trend that I have seen in college hoops a lot of the time, especially right after the holidays when teams kind of figure out pretty quickly we're out of this. And so um, what I want to do just to kind of put a, a a cap on it, we're heading, well not a cap on it because we're heading into the home stretch what we've got three weeks left. Um, if that, something like that until the conference tournaments start, they start what first weekend in March, second weekend in March because the First and second weekend because the the NCAA tournament starts in the third weekend of March every year. So yeah, I mean we're really coming down the home stretch. And so what I want to do is I want to give you five five leaders in the clubhouse um, in each of the clubhouses. <laughs> so I'm going to give you five of the top dogs as leans and five of the top as fades. All right, let's start with the leans. Okay, boy, this is random. Tulane. 14 and 8. Again, all against the spread. Good teams win, great teams cover. This is all against the against the spread. I don't care about their record. Okay. Tulane, 14 and 8. ATS. Toledo, one of the main leaders of the leaders in the clubhouse. 19 and 6. ATS. DePaul, 15 and 8. ATS. Seattle, 14, 8, and 1 ATS. And Texas Tech. 17 and 8 ATS. The fades, and I'm going to save an interesting one for last because I, I do want to share an interesting interesting story that I think I've shared before just to refresh everybody, okay? Louisville, 7, 15 and 2 ATS. Colorado, 8, 14 and 3 ATS. Georgia Tech, 8, 15 and 1 ATS. One of the leaders in the clubhouse of all these, of all these fades. And Nevada, 7-16, and 16, another leader. However, nothing holds a candle to the fifth team on this list. Drake. Drake is 6-17 and 17 ATS. I believe they're number one in their conference. But as I told you before, and I'm going to check my notes because I have this very small, you can see it here, I have this very small wire notebook, the wire that's at the top. It's pretty much something that you make a list on. I have a list of all of... All of the um, the wins, um, some of which were, were were more like seasons that you know, again as I said before, kept me out of poverty. Um, but one of the years, and I do believe that it was that was Hofstra three years ago. Drake um, set a Las Vegas record. They were eighteen and three. First 21 games of the year, they went 18 and three against the spread. 
nothing. I don't think that'll ever be touched. I personally do not think. And I I jumped on it late. I was really mad. Um, and this year they're six and seventeen. And so when you're looking at these numbers and you're looking at the spreads, just try to think of it as the house is just putting a number on it, trying to get equal odds on each side. Because at the end of the day, the house usually always wins or they come out even. And that's what they're doing with Drake. One season they can't figure them out. The next season they can and they get their money back. So um, I truly hope you've been following the the leans and fades experiment. It's working. I hope you're making money. I'm hoping I'm helping you out. Whatever action that you have going on with all the teams that I've given you, I've now given you 30 plus teams on each side of the uh, lean and fade list over the last couple of weeks. I hope they've been profitable. Hopefully you didn't take it too much on that one Saturday that we had, but whatever action you have tonight, good luck with your bets.